Johnny Dollar. My name is Bartley, Mr. Dollar. Tom Bartley. Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company here in Des Moines. What can I do for you, Mr. Bartley? Case Paper Products Company. One of our pretty important clients. It looks like somebody's trying to blow them off the map. Blow them off the map? Explosions and fires in a couple of their chain of warehouses. Oh? Yes. That have so far cost us over $120,000. And if they have any more of them, or if their main plant here in Des Moines gets hit... I see what you mean. Okay, Mr. Bartley. If I get any kind of break on plane schedules, I'll see you sometime late this afternoon. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company, Des Moines office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the case of trouble matter. Expense account item one, $102.65 plane fare to New York, to Chicago, to Des Moines, Iowa. And thanks to good connections, we circled the transmission tower of KRNT, passed over the Raccoon River, and set down at Municipal Airport shortly after 4 p.m. Item two, out of force of habit, $50 deposit on a rental car. I headed north on Fleur Drive, that's Route 123, and a few minutes later walked into Tom Bartley's office on Mulberry Street in town. I beg your pardon. Yes, Mr. Case. What? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, well, may I help you, sir? Well, I don't know. My name is Johnny Dollar, and is something wrong, miss? No, 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 I'm sorry. And Mr. Bartley is expecting you, Mr. Dollar, but he isn't here now. Oh? He's gone to Indianola. Where's that? Eighteen miles south of here, and he wants you to meet him there, Mr. Dollar, just as quickly as possible. Okay, but where down there? He says you'll know when you get there, and that you'll have no trouble finding him. Well, I've never met him, you know. Just the same, he says you'll know when you get there. Funny. And to, uh, please see him right away, immediately. Okay, whatever you say. Indianola's a little town, about 7,000. And that secretary was right. I had no trouble at all finding Tom Bartley, much less his reason for being there. A thick pall of smoke hung over the place. It came from the smoldering remains of a big building just a block off Highway 69 near the edge of the South River. A sign at one edge of the property said the building had belonged to Case Paper Products Company. I pulled up next to a group of firemen who were busy with a hose killing the last of the hot spots. Hey, Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Yeah. Tom Bartley. Tom, glad to know you. Well, there you are. There it is, number three, what's left of it. And this one will cost us 50, 60,000 more at least. You think this and the others you called about have been arson, hmm? So does Albert Case. He and his brother Ed own the business. Main plant in Des Moines and a lot of warehouses scattered around. Why scattered around, Tom, instead of close to the main plant? No room up there. Also, it saves money because of cheaper property in these small towns. Where are the others? Well, those that are left are in Knoxville, Osceola, Colfax, and Grinnell. But who knows for how long? On the phone, you said explosions and fires. That's the way they've all started, with an explosion. Yeah. That would indicate arson, all right. Also a pattern by one man. Right. But paper burns so hard and fast and hot, there's never any concrete evidence after a fire's over. How about these case brothers, Tom? Now, look, there's no point in hanging around this mess. It's all over and done with, but our insurance payoff. So why don't you pile into your car and follow me home, Johnny? We can talk about it there over a stiff drink that I can well use. Okay, if you like. Besides, it's getting late, and I promised Millie I'd bring you home for dinner. Lead the way. you have here, Tom. Well, thanks. We like it. Oh, hi, darling. Have a busy day at the... What? Ed! Huh? What? Well, yes, I guess Johnny does look like Ed Case at that. 
Uh, Johnny. Uh, Mildred, this is Johnny Dollar. Oh. Well, hi, Johnny. Uh, um, welcome. Uh, hi, Millie. Uh, now, you two can go in there and relax, and I'll bring you a drink. Uh, scotch and soda, all right, Johnny? It's what Tom always drinks. Oh, that'll suit me fine. Uh, uh, sit down, Johnny. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks, Tom. Mighty attractive little wife you have there. Millie used to be a singer and dancer in a sister act. Oh? Now, uh, about the case, Brothers Tom. Well, Albert actually runs the business. Ed just shares the profits. Kind of a black sheep of the family, I've heard. I see. Uh, here we are, boys. Uh, one for you, Johnny. One for you, darling. And one for me. Well, thank you, ma'am. Well, to the gods and goddesses and us. <laughs> a drink to that. <laughs> Oh, Tom, darling, yeah? uh, before I forget, Albert Case promised to drop in. Oh, good, good. I want Johnny to meet him. As a matter of fact, he ought to be here right now. He only lives a few blocks away. Uh, he's been up in the town of Madrid, Johnny, cleaning up after a previous fire so he can sell the property. You mean he's planning to just... just pocket the insurance money? I guess so. Incidentally, he himself discovered that fire. He did, hmm? Tom, tell me, um... How has business been with the Case brothers lately? Well, not so good, I guess, but then that's true of a lot. Now, now, wait a minute, Johnny. Possibility, isn't it? But Albert Case burned down his own... Oh, now, listen, you don't know him. I know, but maybe you don't either, Tom, at least as well as you think you do. Oh, no, Johnny, you're wrong in what you're thinking. Well, I've known Al Case for years. I've known him well. Mm -hmm. What about his brother, Ed, the black sheep? Well, now, Ed, of course, is a different... Ma oh, excuse me. Ma Hello? Tom, this is Albert Case. It's Al, Johnny. Come listen. Right. Tom. Yes, Al? I told you. I told you those fires were set. All of them. I know you did. Well, I have proof. You have, huh? Then we'll be right over. No. What? No, no, you mustn't come here. Uh, and I mustn't stay here. What? What do you mean? Because I... Because I... Hello? Hello? Al! I don't get it. You know where he lives, Tom? Well, sure, but why did he hang Come up? Come on, a... let's go. As we pulled up at his house, we could see Albert Case through a picture window, sitting at a desk, telephone in hand. Hey, Al, we're here. Darling, can't you see he's on the phone I in know, there? I know, but he acts as though he doesn't even hear us. Wait, Tom. What's the matter, Johnny? Stand back. Hmm? Well, what's the matter? Stand back. Here we go now. Johnny. What is it? What's the matter? Don't you see from out there? Now do you see? Oh, no, what's wrong with... Oh, no. Well, Johnny... That's with the forehead, Tom. Looks like it was done by a 38. You know, sometimes late at night when business gets slack here in the diner and I'm listening to the radio, I think to myself... I mean, suppose that Newport dame should walk in right now, sit down at the counter and say, Heine, from now on I want you to smoke Newport filter cigarettes. You know they have the soothing coolness of menthol, the hint of mint and wonderful rich tobacco. It's that exclusive pleasant smoking combination that makes Newport more refreshing to begin with, more refreshing all the way. Will you do this for me, Heine? <laughs> Lady, I'd say, take the place. The whole joint, the steam table, the coffee maker, it's all yours. I'm a Newport smoker forever. Tom took the telephone out of the dead man's hand and called the police. Millie turned pale and slumped into a chair, and I gave the place a quick rundown, checked the doors and windows. 
A few minutes later, a young policeman arrived. Now, were you all here when it happened, Mr. Bartley, Mrs. Bartley, and uh, yeah, who are you? Uh, he's working for me, officer. He's Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Uh, you insurance guys work pretty fast, don't you? <laughs> Maybe too fast. Are uh, you related to Mr. Case? Well, are you? No. Why? Uh, you look a little like him. All right, now, who busted in the front door? I did, officer, when I saw through the window that something was very obviously wrong with Mr. Case. Oh, just took things in your own hands and busted in, huh? That's right. All right, let's see what I can find out here. Yeah. Yeah, sure, here it is. A bullet hole through this window. You know what that means? It means somebody plugged them from outside there. You're sure? Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm sure. So go on, you three, huh? Now, where'd your wife go, Bartley? Well, out to the car. Yeah, well, who told her she could leave? Who told her she had to sit here looking at a corpse? He wasn't shot by somebody standing outside, Johnny? Well, how do you know? I saw that bullet hole in the window, too. Yeah? But there were no particles of glass on the inside of the sill. But there were on the outside? That's right. So the shot was fired inside by somebody that Albert Case let in or who had normal access to the house. Remember when Albert's phoning to you was cut off? Yes. Because somebody was there and had to stop him from talking about his proof of arson or from naming the arsonist. Hmm. Was Albert married? Uh, no. Well... Yeah. So his death means that his brother Ed would own the business now. Yes, I guess so. Where does he live? It's in the town of Grinnell, the other side of Colfax. Both those towns have warehouses in them, right? Yes, that's right. Now, now, wait a minute. I'll pick up my rental car at your house and take off. For where? Grinnell, by way of Colfax. But at Colfax, I made a stop question some of the people standing around another big warehouse fire. Yes, the Case Paper Products Warehouse. But in walking toward it in the semi-darkness, I stumbled over a little old man quietly sobbing to himself. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to walk all over you like that. Oh, what difference does it make? I knew it would happen. I knew this was going to happen. You mean this fire? Yes, and I told Mr. Albert it was going to happen, too. Wait a minute. You mean Mr. Albert Case? Yes, I've been his night watchman for years, I have. And I told him it would happen, I did. Ever since that car started coming around here every night, prowling around, I know it wasn't up to any good, and I told him so. I told Mr. Albert about it. What kind of a car was it? A big, white, fine car. A Parati with no top onto it. Yes? And when I told him about that car this afternoon, you know what Mr. Albert said? What? He said he knew then. He knew who it was that had been trying to burn him out. He said he knew him. Did he tell you who he meant? Only that now he was sure. And he'd give me this this gun, this pistol to carry, in case it'd come around again. A white parati convertible, hmm? Uh, yes, sir. And I think I know the man he means, too, that drives one. And if he does come around here, Mr... Hey, let me help you off, yes. sir. I, I... <laughs> you! What? It's you! Well, you're the one. Now, listen, please. Uh, after what you've done, I'm going to kill you. Now, wait a minute. Put down that I'm gun. I'm going to kill you. Thank goodness it was a bad shot. There was no point hanging around to explain things to the fireman. I grabbed his gun and took off. Pete thought that I was someone else. Millie Bartley had, too. Matter of fact, even I had noticed a sort of family-type resemblance between myself and the dead man, Albert Case. All right. I'd hoped to make the rest of the trip in something under legal time, but after having the fuel pump of my car conk out on me, then spending literally hours at an all-night service station getting a new one, incidentally, that's item three, 1580, the sun was up by the time I got to Grinnell. At police headquarters there, I barged into the office of Lieutenant Cal Golden without waiting to be announced. Ah, you're an early bird. Sit down for a minute while I finish up this report, Mr. Case. What? Oh, sure. Tried all night to phone you, Mr. Case, but got no answer. You did, hmm? That's very interesting. I'm afraid I have bad news for you about your brother, Albert. There we are. Yeah. Seems that last night somebody... Wait a minute. Yeah? 
Well, I'll be... You look like Ed Case. Don't worry, Lieutenant. You're not the first one to make that mistake. But who are you, then? My name is Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. By golly, you look enough like Ed Case to be his twin brother. And you sound like him. Tell me, you haven't been able to contact him yet? No, sir. Then let me throw one at you, Lieutenant. Yeah? I have good reason to believe Ed Case is not only the firebug we're after. What? But the man who killed his brother... took a little convincing, but the lieutenant finally agreed to put out an APB on Ed Case. And he gave me Ed's address. 1217 LaCroix Place. There was no answer to the doorbell there, so I went to the house next door. Yes? Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, it's you, Ed Case. I beg your pardon. No, wait. You're not Ed Case. You're somebody else. That's right, ma'am. My name is Dollar. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have known because of your car. That's right. He drives a white one, doesn't he? Yes, just one of them fancy foreign things with the top down all the time. Mm -hmm. Like the one that he gave to that blonde hussy that comes around to see him all the time. A blonde, ma'am? Comes up from Des Moines all the time in and out of that house of his like she belonged there. It's disgusting. From Des Moines, did you say? If there's anything I don't like, it's a little blonde with green eyes and one of those olive type of complexions they don't deserve Thank to you, have. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. That description of Ed's girlfriend. It was Millie Bartley, Tom's wife. Petite, olive complexion, green eyes, and she lived in Des Moines. And I remembered her momentary surprise when she first saw me. Item four, 90 cents for a phone call. Why, no, Johnny. I don't know where Millie is. I heard her talking on the phone to her friend Bernice. They used to be in a sister act, you know. Well, then, Tom... But then she ducked out of the house and left in the car. I see. Okay, Tom, thanks. But how are you doing? Anything new that I ought to know about this arson murder thing? No, Tom. Nothing you need to worry about. Not yet. I drove back to LaCroix Place, parked a block away, and walked to 1217. There was no answer again, so I went around to the back door, slipped the lock with a business card, and walked in, leaving it open for a possible quick exit. That was a mistake, because a couple of minutes later, as I rounded a corner to the living room, I felt the barrel of a gun in my back. Oh, so you're out of town, huh? Well, now I know different. Now, wait a minute. Don't move, Eddie boy. Trying to stall on that five grand you owe me won't work. You think I'm Ed Case? What do you mean, think? Now, listen, I'm You know not... what happens when you try and stall me, Eddie? This <laughs> hot. have really done a job on me because when I came to it, it was dark. And I felt a little bit rocky, to say the least. What roused me was the sound of steps, a woman's steps quietly coming in the back door. There were no lights, remember. Then briefly silhouetted against a window, I saw the all-too-familiar trim, petite figure coming toward me. Eddie? Oh, no, you're hurt. Oh, honey, you're hurt. What happened? Oh, you don't know, hmm? Oh, yeah, with Louie getting even because you didn't pay him soon enough for that last fire. Oh, here, Eddie, let me turn on the lights and help no, you. No, 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 huh? just let me, let me rest a minute. Oh, I knew that was him I passed on the highway. Why did you come over here from Des Moines? To make sure you'd play dumb when the cops told you about poor dear old Albert getting knocked off. Why did you come here to the house? Uh, because I hoped that you'd come here, I guess. Oh, you should have waited until I could get up the money to pay Louie. You mean for killing Albert, too? Yeah. Huh? I mean, no. You killed Albert. I saw you from the outside in the car. Yeah, you'd swear to that, wouldn't you? Eddie, what a thing to say. You sound like you don't trust me. Look, we're in this thing together. And whose idea was it to knock off Albert? Well, like I told you, you had to because he was getting wise to you about the fires. You had it figured out that way right from the beginning, didn't you? Baby, now look. First, burn up the warehouses, collect the insurance on them. Well, sure. Then get Al out of the way so you and I would have it all. Well, yeah, that's right. Eddie, what, what are you talking this way for? I don't understand you. I wish to heaven I didn't understand you, Millie. Millie? Come on, let's turn on the lights in here. Eddie? Eddie, you... You're not Eddie. Who are you? Don't try to kid me, Millie. Wait a minute. Who are you? Oh, you're the dick. 
That insurance investigator Millie told me about Johnny Dollar. Let me out of here. Sorry, Let go of me. You're going to stay right here. Millie Barkley's sister, Bernice. Oh, well, oh, sister. well. Sister. Yes. On account of we looked her like we did a sister act once before she married that Bartley guy. Will you let me go? Not a chance, Bernice. Let me go. I think maybe you're better, Dollar. What? Eddie. Yeah, me, Eddie. Don't move, Dollar. Get his gun, Bernice. Take his gun away. Yes, yeah, sure, Eddie. Here. Here, here it is. Ed Case, hmm? That's right. I guess maybe we do look like each other, don't we? It fooled Bernice, Eddie. Before I put the lights on, she told me everything. Eddie, Eddie, don't believe him. It's a lie. No, it isn't, baby. I heard. But listen, I thought he was you. Don't you understand? I thought he was you. Why don't you drive on over here anyway? Because Millie told me Dollar was coming here. You mean she'd up your mouth to Millie, too? I could tell she was getting wise about the fire. You told her. No, Eddie, honest. But she was my friend. She thought maybe she could help me out of this mess. Yeah, you're too late, Bernice. Eddie, what, what are you going to do? I'm going to get rid of the both of you. No. And figure out some way to shut up Louie. But you two are first. Eddie. You'll never get away with this, Eddie. No, even when I use this gun of yours to knock you off. Eddie, please, you're drunk or you're crazy or something. What, well, crazy to save my own life to keep you and Louie and Dyla here from putting a noose around my neck? It's there already, Eddie, and you know it. Shut up. It won't be after I kill you. Eddie, please, That's please. That's going to be right now. Wait a minute. Who's that? The cops. It must be the cops. Oh, yeah? Well, if it is, you wait here. You wait. Ah, oh, no, you don't... You shouldn't have turned toward that door. <laughs> Out of my way. Oh, oh, Eddie, you hit me. Now you, Dollar. Wrong, Eddie. You may have killed her, but you meant gonna. <laughs> Johnny, what is it? What's happening? No, no, Millie. Don't go in there. Bernice? Yes. Eddie killed her. I'm sorry. She was my friend. I'm sorry, Mummy. Where's Tom? I, uh, I came alone, Johnny. Why? When I talked to Bernice on the phone, I, I knew I could tell that your suspicion of Eddie was right, and I hoped that somehow I could help her. Maybe you better call Tom and tell him where you are and what's happened. <laughs> As for the insurance and the estate, Iowa law will have to take care of that. Expense account total, including the trip home, two fifty six ten. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a story with a twist that will surprise you as much as it did me. Tune in, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you drive a car, remember this. Almost anywhere in the country where you see the Sinclair sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon on gasoline by using Sinclair Dino. That's because in three out of five cars... Regular price Sinclair Dino matches the performance of expensive premium gasolines, costing up to four cents more a gallon. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were John Seymour, Abby Lewis, Terry Keene, Edgar Staley, Jack Grimes, Jim Stevens, and Gilbert Mack. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical direction by Fred Cusick. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Stuart Metz speaking. Hear the Dean of Newscasters, Lowell Thomas, weeknights on the CBS Radio Network. CBS for Durham, WDNC. It's 634. When the headache strikes, headache tension builds up. 
You feel terrible. You become irritable. When this happens, here's what you should do. Take Standback powders or tablets. The secret of Standback's effectiveness is its combination formula of several medically proven pain-relieving ingredients in one easy-to-take dose. A combination of ingredients that brings you comforting relief from pain. What's more, Standback's gentle and effective action relieves tension, which usually accompanies pain. Standback has earned both the Good Housekeeping and Parents Magazine seals. You can take Standback with complete confidence. For pains of headache, neuralgia, muscular aches, and cold discomforts, test Standback against any other preparation you've ever used. See for yourself how fast, yet how gently, Standback gives comforting relief. Just trade your headache for a smile. Snap back with Standback, tablets, or powders. 